Hello everyone, my name is Benedek Horvat and today I would like to introduce you the results of a three-year-long research called Pragmatic Verification and Validation of Industrial CISML Models. The motivation of this research was the OpenMBE community, that is an open model-based engineering environment which consists of a model repository, several web services which help the modeling and the analysis of systems engineering models, a view editor that lets the users visit the models in the browser and also to leave some review comments there, and the OpenSC cookbook, which contains guidelines and best practices for modeling systems in the aerospace domain. Next to the OpenMB community, there are several modeling and simulation tools that can be attached to this workflow. The modeling tools can help the users to design their system models both the structural and the behavioral aspects, and the simulation tools can help the users test the system in several scenarios. As we inspected this workflow, where we identified that there is no element for the verification of the models, so to check that certain properties are met by the system and to make sure that the system is always behaving correctly. And also, there is a missing service for validation, which could check that the model conforms to certain structural constraints so that it can be verified later in the workflow. In the simulation and the modeling tools, we identified some semantic gaps between how the models are represented and how they are interpreted. More specifically, both the simulation and the design tools conform the, to the UML and CSML standards with several semantics, for example, the PSSM, PSCS, or the FAML standards, but these tools are not implementing the standards 100%, which means there are some differences between how the standard is prescribing certain structures, certain elements, and their meanings, and how these modeling and simulation tools are interpreting these models. Due to these uh, semantic gaps, between the interpretations, the validation results that are written by the simulation tool might not be correctly represented in the modeling tool, or there might be certain elements that cannot be checked because of these differences. To bridge these semantic gaps and to close the meaning of the model elements, we defined a model validation and verification workflow, which consists of a subset of SysML and this validation and verification workflow helps the users to check certain properties, so-called reachability properties on the models to make sure that the systems are behaving correctly. Let's have a look at, the, at an example model. In this example model we see a simplified system of a spacecraft in the ground station. The spacecraft is sending packets to the ground station and its battery is also depleting after a certain amount of time is passed and if the battery is below 80 then it's, it starts recharging until it is fully recharged. In the transmitting region the after the spacecraft starts operating it sends data packets to the ground station the ground station is receiving these data packets Count, it counts how many packets it has received and it also forwards the received packages to the environment so that uh, any other system that is listening on the outside in the environment can receive these packets that were sent by the spacecraft. To check the correctness of this model, we define the reachability properties. Reachability properties prescribe a certain state configuration whose reachability can be proved by model checkers. A state configuration can consist of states of the state machine and also invariants of the blocks that contain these state machines. In this example, we say that the spacecraft is in the transmitting state, its battery is less than 80, the ground station is in the receiving state and it has received at least 20 packets. We want to prove that this state configuration is reachable. If this is the case, then it means 
that there is an error in the system because in our case this reachability property prescribes an erroneous state configuration that shall never be reachable. If the model checker returns us a counterexample proving that this state configuration is reachable, then we can use this counterexample to check how the model is getting from the initial state to this erroneous state configuration. And all along this trace, we can see where the design went wrong and we can figure out how to fix the problem. To support the evaluation of reachability properties, we define the flow following cloud-based workflow. Systems engineers are using their SysML tools to model the behavior and the structure of the systems. This, the system models are uploaded to MMS, the model repository. From the MMS, inquiry server is downloading the models and building an in-memory index on top of it. This in-memory index will be used for the analysis and the model transformations to efficiently execute the static checks and then to transform the models to a further representation. After the model is uploaded to the model repository, the user can open up a browser and visit the website uh, to start interacting with the Jupyter Notebook. The Jupyter Notebook is our front end to the user. In this Jupyter Notebook, the user can select which model she wants to verify. And after that, she can check the structural correctness of the models by, by running these validation rules. The validation rules are run in the validation and transformation service, which receives the model from the inquiry server, as mentioned previously. It runs some static checks on the model to make sure that it is structurally correct so that it can be used for model transformation. In the second transformation phase, we are transforming the SysML models to a so-called gamma model. Gamma is a state chart validation and verification framework. It has its own language for composing state charts. Therefore, we transform the SysML state chart to these. Gamma state chart, the reachability property is transformed to gamma property language model. And after the transformation is done, we are forwarding it to the model checker runtime. In the model checker runtime, the gamma framework is transforming the gamma models to the input formalism of the model checkers. In our case, we support UPAL and Theta. UPAL is good for verifying timed systems, so systems with time variables, and Theta is efficient for evaluating systems with many data variables. As I mentioned, Gamma is transforming the models to the formal representations of the respective model checkers. The model checkers are evaluating the reachability property on the formal model. If the reachability property is satisfied, then the model checkers are returning a low-level trace, which explains how the model can get from the initial state configuration to the um, state configuration described by the reachability property. The gamma framework is transforming this low-level trace to a so-called gamma execution trace. And finally, we are transforming this gamma execution trace to a SysML sequence diagram that we return to the user. The user can use this system diagram to run it in a simulation tool. And in the simulation tool, the user can simulate the diagram or she can do manual inspection to check the states in each step and also the values of the local variables. In the next moments, we will see a demo of this workflow. We will check this reachability property on the spacecraft and ground station model and see the resulting execution trace that, that is transformed to a system a sequence diagram. We will inspect this sequence diagram in a simulation tool. Let's continue with the demo. What we see now is a Jupyter Notebook. In a Jupyter Notebook, the user can run Python code segments to interact with the validation and verification workflow. In the first step, we are logging into Inquiry Server. After that, we ask Inquiry Server to download the latest model revisions from the model repository. Then, we select the model revision that we want to verify. We will use the spacecraft example. 
we are asking the server to index this model revision. We had already indexed this revision, that's why this operation was completed quickly. After that, we are logging into the validation and transformation service. To define the reachability property, we have three options in the browser. First one is to choose the reachability property from the model by a sequence diagram. The second option is to use a simple web form to define a reachability property for just one CSML block. Or we can use a composite form to define reachability properties for blocks with more than one state machines. Let's choose the sequence diagram for this example. To get the sequence diagrams from the model, the validation and transformation service downloads the index from the inquiry server to get the sequence diagrams from the model. After the download was done, we can select the sequence diagram called transmitting below 80. Then we are checking if the model is structurally correct. The validation results will be returned in a table. In the table, we can see that there are certain model elements whose meaning is different. So more specifically, we have two orthogonal regions who will be executed in a sequential order in the model checking phase. Moreover, we have two orthogonal regions who have variables which are read and written concurrently, and the user has to be aware that these conflicting read-write interactions might cause problems at runtime if the variables are written and read at the same time. If the user clicks on the element link, then, then the model will be opened in the inquiry model viewer. So in the inquiry model viewer, the user can inspect the structure of the model in a simple tree view and also see the properties of the model elements without having to install any CSML design tools on their machines. In this example, we can see that the operation region is an orthogonal region to the battery region, so the warnings were correct. Since there is no validation error in the model, we can continue with the model transformation. In the transformation phase, we are transforming the CSML state machines to gamma state charts. The transformation was successful. After that, in the model checking phase, we can choose between two model checkers, UPAL and Theta. In our case, we will use UPAL because it is supported for timed systems. Theta would be useful if we had many data variables. In our case, timing is more important, so we use the UPAL model checker. In the verification phase, we are transforming the gamma state machine to the model checker formal models and also the reachability properties transformed to a formal expression that is evaluated by the model checker. If the model is satisfied, then we get the execution trace. A visualization of the gamma execution trace is presented. In this trace, we can see the initial state configuration, so the active states of the system, also the internal variables of each state machine and their values. In each step, we can see the incoming signals, the outgoing signals, and how much time was spent in that step. If we go through these trace, we can see in the end that the reachability property is satisfied so that the spacecraft is in the transmitting state. It has sent 20 data packets and the battery is below 80 and the ground station is in the receiving state and it has received already 20 packets. If we go back to the Jupyter notebook, then besides the gamma execution trace, we can also generate a Python script that can be used in Camel Systems Modeler or in Magic Draw to generate the sequence diagram.
If we open the downloaded archive, then we find the log file and the Python script in it. Let's open this Python script in Camaro Systems Modeler. In Camaro Systems Modeler, we can open the script as a macro. I already selected the Python script. Just click OK, select the script, and then run. The script was run successfully. Due to some layouting problems, the resulting sequence diagram is a bit difficult to read. Nevertheless, we can see that the initial, in the initial state configuration, the ground station is in the idle state. It has its internal variables with the initial values. The spacecraft is also in this initial state configuration. And after that, the we can see the different steps, so how the states are changing. And if we go to the end, then we can see that the, as I mentioned, there are some layouting problems, so the lifelines are not correctly represented. But we can see that the spacecraft is in its final state configuration, and the Ground station is also in this in its final state configuration, and the messages were sent on the corresponding ports. The resulting sequence diagram can be used for simulation purposes to drive the simulation of the state machines or for manual inspection to go through the different states. The state machine was in the messages it sent and received to be able to identify the step in which the state machine's behavior deterred from the prescribed and expected trace. An earlier version of this workflow has been published on the OpenMBE workshop of Models Conference in 2020. The interested readers can download this paper and read the details. It should be mentioned that this was the first prototype of our solution, so that not everything that is mentioned in this talk or presented in this paper. There is a new paper under review which explains this whole new workflow. I would like to thank the help of several colleagues, both from Inquiry Labs and Critical Systems Research Group, who helped the success of this uh, research. This research was a collaboration between Inquiry Labs, Critical Systems Research Group, NASA, JPN, and ESO, and uh, we are very thankful for our partners who collaborated in this research. I would like to also thank the support from our sponsors, the Locomode Project and the Embrace Project. And finally, a disclaimer uh, from NASA JPL that reference herein to any specific commercial product, process, or service by trade name, trademark, manufacturer, or otherwise doesn't constitute or imply its endorsement by the United States government or Jet Propulsion Laboratory, California Institute of Technology. If you are interested in this research, then please visit the Locomote website to learn more about this project or you can look up the workshop paper that introduced an earlier prototype of the validation and verification workflow. Finally, if you would like to learn more about Inquiry Server, Inquiry Model Viewer, or the whole Inquiry suite, then please visit the inquiry.io website. Thank you for your attention.